I am highly optimistic that we will conduct a good transition process at the end of which a new set of political leaders will freely emerge. President Buhari restates commitment for a free and fair election, Camp 2023, as host to new ambassadors. The essence of political campaign is to talk to the people, sell out your policies and the objectives of your party. Few hours to the commencement of political campaigns, correspondent on do's and don'ts in line with Electoral Act 2022. If anybody fails to meet up with this expectation, the decision of the MPC is that we may need to preclude those banks from foreign exchange market. Plus, Central Bank of Nigeria to mop out liquidity as Monetary Policy Committee hikes rate. Hello and welcome to NTA Network News. I'm Ian Ray John and we're live in Abuja. Adiola Komi Akere joins me from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. And just so you know, you can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nt.ng slash live and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. Let's begin from the State House, where President Muhammad Buhari has expressed his administration's formal appreciation to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, for the unprecedented strides being achieved recently in its renewed efforts at ridding Nigeria of the drug menace. This was when the chairman and chief executive officer of the agency, Muhammad Buba Mora, briefed him on the recent cocaine seizure described as the highest in the history of Nigeria. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has the details. Since the appointment of General Mohamed Bo Marwa as Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the NDLEA in January last year, renewed impetus has been given to the onerous task of ridding Nigeria of the drug menace. Indeed, significant achievements have been recorded in eliminating the growing, processing, manufacturing, selling, exporting and trafficking of hard drugs in the country. The recent smashing of an international drug syndicate and recovery of 1.855 kilograms of cocaine valued at over $278 million was unprecedented in the nation's history. President Buhari, who was in New York, had to put a call to the chairman of the Anti-Narcotics Agency to express his deep appreciation for the giant strides achieved in the renewed onslaught against what he called the wicked merchants of death. President Buhari is back in Abuja, and the NDLA chairman is here to give further details on the successful operation by the agency. He told the president that the cocaine worth about 195 billion naira recovered from a warehouse in Lagos has already been destroyed. The Ikorodu operation, he said, was conducted clinically without any skirmish or bloodshed a pointer to the fact that the game has changed in the war against illicit drugs. General Bubu Marwa thanked President Buhari for not only his support and encouragement, but also the political will provided for the war against drug abuse. Keep up the good job, President Buhari concluded. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And as you heard in that report, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has destroyed the largest cocaine seizure made in the history of the agency. Director of Prosecution and Legal Services, Sandy Joseph, led other agencies to supervise the destruction exercise. Diana Adderley reports. Statistics from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. Nigeria's prevalence rate is put at 14.4% an indication that about 15 million people are under the drug siege across the country. This figure is not cheering. What is, however, cheering is the renewed determination by the NDLEA to ensure that activities of drug barons and cartels are reduced to the barest minimum, while illicit drug users will be made to face the wrath of the law. This 
public destruction of the cocaine seized by the operatives on the 18th of this month in Ikorodu Axis of Lagos is a testimony to this stance. The exercise shows that the agency is very serious. And uh, thirdly, he explained why we have to burn the exhibits. And that is for the purpose of ensuring that we remove it from circulation so that there is no chance or danger of it being returned. To um, swing to drugs is easy, but to come out is a big problem. So, but the advice is that don't try it because a trial might just destroy the person and also destroy the environment that you stay in. The director added that remains of the confiscated cocaine will be secured for purpose of prosecution of the suspects who were brought to witness the procedure and sign a certificate of destruction. The NDLEA is optimistic that the success recorded so far should spur Nigerians support in its renewed war against illicit drugs targeted at reducing crime. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NCA News. Now, looking at electoral artists as Nigeria's 2023 electioneering campaigns formally begin on Wednesday, President Maud Buhari has restated the com commitment of his administration to a good transition process that will usher in a new set of freely elected political leaders. This was while receiving new ambassadors and high commissioners posted to Nigeria on tour of duty. Set House correspondent Adam Musambo brings us details. The new envoys who presented their letters of credence to President Muhammad Buhari were the High Commissioner of India, Mr. Gangadram Palasubramanian, Ambassador Annette Gunther of Germany, and Muhammad Yusuf Ibrahim Abdelmanan of Sudan. There were also Grengbo Yakivu Pascalin of the Democratic Republic of Congo, State of Palestine, Abdullah Abu Shawais, and the Kingdom of Netherlands, William Wouter Plum. The new envoys, President Buhari said, are assuming diplomatic responsibilities in Nigeria at a very interesting political period as general elections are due in February next year. I want to say again, as I did just a few days ago at the United Nations General Assembly, that we remain committed to free and fair elections. I am highly optimistic that we will conduct a good transition process at the end of which a new set of political leaders will freely emerge. The countries that represent the Nigerian leaders said are some of Nigeria's most important trading, political and cultural partners with their cooperation and collaboration in critical economic sectors deeply rooted and expanding. We enjoy unfettered freedom of speech and engage in robust political discourse. Sometimes the nature of this discourse tends to give the impression that we are constantly opposed to each other. The reality is that there is so much that binds us together than the few areas of our divergence. I have no doubt in my mind that you will soon appreciate our uniqueness and the indeed resilience as a people. The global community, the president said, now lives in an unprecedented challenging time occasioned by the consequences of climate change and the negative impact of the war in Ukraine coming just as the people are recovering from the catastrophic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The various factors that account for these challenges are beyond the capacity of any single country to contain them alone. Hence, the necessity for all of us to work closely together to build a consensus in order to overcome them and also minimize tensions and confrontations amongst and between ourselves. We firmly remain committed to multilateralism. The Indian High Commissioner to Nigeria, on behalf of the diplomats, assured President Buhari of the full support of their countries, especially as Nigerians return to the polls next year, saying they will work with his government and the leader that emerges after elections. On behalf of India, I reiterate our commitment to build closer relations with Nigeria on all aspects.
The Federal Republic of Germany is committed to deepen economic relations and cooperation in the energy sector and on climate issues. The Republic of the Netherlands stimulates partnerships in agriculture and the dairy sector to increase local food production in Nigeria and create employment and entrepreneurship opportunities for young people. The new High Commissioners and Ambassadors were earlier treated to a befitting diplomatic welcome by officers and soldiers of the Presidential Guards Brigade on arrival at the Nigerian seat of government. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, on the Electoral Act 2022, campaigns are expected to commence by both political parties and their candidates 150 days before the election. The provisions of the Electoral Act are specific on the conduct of the political parties and candidates during the electioneering process. Delia Tumbi of Judiciary Desk takes a look at sections 92 and 93 of the Electoral Act 2022 as they affect campaigns. Section 92 of the Electoral Act 2022 deals with the prohibition of certain conducts during political campaigns. One of such prohibited conducts is the tainting of political slogans or campaign with abusive language capable of injuring religious, ethnic, tribal, or sectional feelings. The law also bars the use of abusive, intemperate, slanderous language or innuendos designed to provoke violent reaction or emotions during electioneering. Section 92, subsection 3 also prohibits political campaigns in places designated for religious worship, police station, and public offices. You don't use or find the embers of religion in the name of obtaining or trying to woo supporters to get votes. The essence of political campaign is to talk to the people, sell out your policies and the objectives of your party. Or guiding to us against the idea of campaign that should not have abusive languages, innuendos, slogans that are aimed at tarnishing the other person's image. The use of masquerades during political campaigns, either by a political party or candidate, is also outlawed. Section 93 of the Act also bars political parties and their candidates from the employment or training of any person with the aim of displaying physical force during campaigns. A political party and its candidates should not employ the use of force. And that is why sometimes you know that in some instances you find that some uh, private security guards are used to, during campaigns. The law doesn't allow that. Electoral Act 2022, which repealed the Electoral Act 2010, is intended to bring sanity and order to the way and manner political campaigns take place in Nigeria from the 28th of September, when it came. Sections 92 and 93 of the Electoral Act 2022 also provided appropriate punishments for the contravention of the provisions under the Act. All these provisions, according to the legal practitioners, are geared towards peaceful campaigns. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. And as com campaigns kick off in a few hours, we have more on electoral matters after this break. Please stay. The 62nd Independence Day Celebration Planning Committee announces activities lined up for the celebration as follows. Public lecture focused on national unity. Date, Thursday, 29 September 2022. Venue, State House Conference Hall, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. Kima at Public Lecture. Date, Friday, 30th September 2022. Venue, National Mosque, Central Business District, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. Special Juma Prayers. Venue, National Mosque, Central Business District, Abuja. Time, 1 p.m. Presidential Broadcast. Date, Saturday, 1st October 2022. Time, 7 a.m. Military Parade. Date, Saturday, 1st October 2022. Time, 8 a.m. Announcer, Planning Committee. I beg, never remove them. I want to see what's happening. 
I'm not just streaming content. I'm just escaping traffic. Get your gigabyte data plus one hour YouTube free on Atel Super Beach Band. Dial star 141 star 514 hash now. Atel, the smartphone network. The Chairman, Body of Benches, Chief Wale Olanik Mekun, OFRSAN, on behalf of the Body of Benches, cordially invites all benchers and special invitees to the official commissioning of the Body of Benches Complex by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, date 29th September 2022, time 10 a.m., venue, plot 688, Institution and Research District, FCC Phase 3, Abuja, FCT. All benches and guests are to be seated by 9 a.m. This event is strictly by invitation. Announcer, Daniel Manasseh Teller, Esquire, Secretary, Body of Benches. They say nothing good comes easy, but with determination and chef focus, Boa Foods finds new ways to put food on many plates. We produce competitively priced sugar, flour, and pasta that are highly sought after by our corporate and trade partners. At Boa Foods, we remain committed to lead with purpose and make a difference by embracing the responsibility to meet Africa's growing food demand. We dare to lead. So can you. Boa Foods. Nourishing lives. Inflation, insecurity, energy crisis, fluctuating exchange rates, the Russian-Ukraine war, a looming global recession, and the list goes on. How do these issues affect our economy and the business environment? Join Development Bank of Nigeria, DBN PLC, as it hosts its third annual lecture series with the theme, MSMEs thriving in the face of domestic and global disruptions. The DBN annual lecture series is aimed at preferring workable solutions to help MSMEs make progress within this challenging economic environment and is open to MSMEs, regulators, development partners, MD participating financial institutions, other financial institutions, and the public. This hybrid event will hold on Thursday, September 29th, 2022 at 9 a.m. at Transcom Hills in Abuja. It will also stream online. Attendance is free, but registration is compulsory. Register at devbackng.com. Special guest of honor, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, SAN GCON, Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, hosts, Chairman Board of Directors, Dr. Shehu Yaya, and NBC CEO, Dr. Tony Okarachi, Development Bank of Nigeria, Financing Sustainable Growth. It's a book presentation by Nigeria's top unifier and PDP presidential candidate for next year's election, Atiku Abubakar. GCOR, as he will present three books on his leadership style, contributions to democratic and constitutional growth in Nigeria. The titles are The Atiku Abubakar Story, The Atiku Abubakar Landman Constitutional Law Cases, and Restructuring as Pathway for Unity and Development. The Atiku Abubakar Files. Date is Wednesday, 28th September 2022. Venue International Conference Center, Central Business District, Abuja. Time 10 a.m. Chairman, former Vice President, Architect Nama Disambo, Special Guest of Honor, Chief Emeka Nyaoko, Chief Host, Senator Philip Aduda, Book Reviewer, Professor Maxwell Michael Gidado, S.A. Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Majesty Lamido Adamawa, Atiku Abubakar, is a leader and a reader. Let's know more about him. Book Presentation Organizing Committee Announcer. Announcer. The Zenith Better Life promo is back, and it's bigger and better. You could be one of 20 lucky customers to win 150,000 Naira every two weeks from now till January 31st, 2023. To qualify, simply open the Zenith Bank account and maintain a minimum balance of 5,000 Naira. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Thank you for staying. In a matter of hours, political campaigns ahead of the 2023 general elections will start in accordance with the schedule of political activities drawn up by INEC. In this report, Lynn Leneke takes a look at the clamor for issue-based campaigns that can engender mass participation in an atmosphere of peace. 
Preparation for the 2023 polls is a multi-stakeholders affair and has been on for several months. However, the political temperature will expectedly experience a spike as INEC lifts ban on political campaigns, presenting political parties with opportunity to publicly converse votes for the electorates. As important as this phase of the election preparation is, both the voting public and the electoral process itself may be shortchanged if propaganda, hate speeches, and inflammatory narratives are allowed. We need to talk on how we can get employment for our children and how we can build infrastructures that will enable Nigeria to be ranked among the committee of nations. So anything that will bring hate speeches, that will be, you know, you'll be attacking uh, one uh, political party, attacking individuals those things will not help us the decorum and sportsmanship that is expected to guide the campaigns clear cut agenda on how to move the nation forward will hopefully dominate their messages INEC has done so well today election manipulation issues have are, are down to close to zero all the major three political parties will have a pie no matter how big or no matter how small. But Nigerian projects should be the project that all of us should embrace. And uh, thank God, Mr. President has also promised to deliver a credible election. We are emphasizing that the campaign should be in a decent language and that um, the broker's platform should give all the political parties and uh, candidates equal opportunity to make use of the platform. Experts, stakeholders say, is the first of many steps towards taking democratic practice to another step higher in the country. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. And joining us in the studio to discuss some of the issues on political campaigns as is a senior advocate of Nigeria, Yunus Ustaz Osman, SEN. Thank you for joining us, sir. Good evening. Okay, now, uh, Section 92 of the Electoral Act 2022, you know, prohibits certain conduct uh, during this process. Could you tell us more of this conduct? It is not just Section 92. The whole thing spans from Sections 87 to Section 97. Those sections cover the conduct expected of all the aspirants from tomorrow until the put their votes in the box. They must be guided. But Section 92 in particular, sympathetic, it says you should not use abusive language in the conduct of your campaigns, nor such a language as would injure uh, a section of the country or a, a, a religious uh, sentiment or anything of that sort. And But, but the most important one that's I'm very much appreciative of is subsection 5 of section 92. That is that Togri must be buried. And you know the interesting thing? Uh, the, if, if you use talks, you have committed an offense, you pay a, a fine of uh, uh, five million, but those people you use as thugs, your own punishment is, is 12 months maximum. Those people you might have used as thugs, that is our youth, who have always been used as thugs, will now go in for three years. And it's a mm. very good development. Because our people say, if there is no career, the thief will not steal. True. Now, Section 93 talks about uh, prohibition of the use of force uh, during campaigns. How successful do you think this would be? You know, linking it with what Section 92, Subsection 5, you know, says, like you said, talking about thuggery, and then talking about our previous experiences uh, when it comes to uh, campaigns. I think the, the way things are going, and seen from the conduct of elections in some states, done by INEX uh, so far, and one must commend uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. I, I think people are learning the lesson now. And particularly, if we are serious in carrying out these punishments, no, no young person will now allow himself to be used as a thug because he will go in for three years. While his master, that is the person who sponsored him, has that, one year term. Uh, yeah, yes. So, and, and I think we we're, we're, we're learning, and particularly with the type of INEC we have now, I think the story 
can no longer continue to be a business as, as usual. But, but let me say something briefly about Section 97. 97 in particular prohibits the use of religion for your campaign, uh, religion, uh, tribal sentiment or segmental campaigns. That is, you you uh, you do not say that ah, don't vote for a Christian or don't vote for a pagan. So don't can you go to a church to campaign? Yeah. Or a mosque? No, to no, 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 no. Those are some of the prohibited areas: churches, mosques. Not only churches and and mosques and and we worshiping areas, but even in public offices, you don't campaign. Great. Yes. Wow. So now that brings me to my uh, next question, talking about the limitation on political broadcast and uh, campaign by political parties. Uh, what is the position of the act in this? Yes, the, the position is, is very clear. That the broadcasting houses, particularly NTA channels and, 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 and some of these uh, popular ones, you should give equal time to all the political parties, equal time and space of time. Space of time in the sense that you, you, you don't lean towards A or B. That is, all the aspirants and the political parties must be treated equally. So what's your advice now uh, to the players as we begin campaigns in a few hours? No, it's not my advice. It's my warning. <laughs> okay. yes, yes, my warning to them is that if you try to do what you were doing before, you're going for it. Thank it, you very it, much. It's no sir. longer like yesterday. Thank you. I'm sure uh, those who should be warned uh, have uh, heard you. Many thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Yunus yeah. Ustaz Usman, SEN, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. All right, let's look at other issues now. The National Union of Road Transport Workers, NURTW, says it will reject any attempt by political groups or individuals to use members to carry out electoral fraud or acts that are inimical to a credible electoral process. The leadership of the Transport Union made a declaration in Abuja ahead of the 2023 general elections. Diri Oburu Aritere reports. Political toggery and diversion of electoral materials have been key challenges in elections in the country. The NURTW, as a partner and critical stakeholder towards free and fair elections, is issuing out the red flag to bad politicians who plan to use members of the union to violate INEX rules and guidelines. They, they should be a lawyer about it. Citizen and, uh promoted, protect, protect the, their integrity and the work they are doing in the standard. Former President NURTW, Najim Yastin, said Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers will resist any effort to use them to mar the system, adding that the union, be a stakeholder, is entrusted with responsibilities of transporting electoral materials during elections and not for political mischief or thuggery. Our members has not talk, and they can't use our members as a talk. They have a very good understanding and memorandum of agreement with the INEC. The leadership of the National Union of Road Transport Workers at the inauguration ceremony of the national headquarters in Abuja said the union is now reformed to meet the required expectations in the transport sector. In Abuja, Odiri Ogboru, Arutere, NTA News. The Nigerian Television Authority is leveraging on its wider coverage to promote quality leadership and accountability amongst candidates of political parties as activities towards the 2023 general elections gathers momentum. To this end, the management of NTA's partnering Credible Alliance for Better Nigeria through a memorandum of understanding to organize a political party summit ahead of the polls. Ngozi Technicu reports. Earning of these dotted lines struck a deal for a new dawn ahead of 2023 election coverage. The 2023 general elections is yet another opportunity for Nigerians to decide among candidates of political parties to emerge as leaders to pilot the affairs of the nation for another dispensation. Taking advantage of the broadcast media space provided by NTA, it becomes imperative to educate the electorates of the credibility of candidates so as to make informed decisions at the polls. 
we shall make sure that uh, the candidates not only make promises, but they also sign uh, an, uh, an agreement with Nigerians that this is what they have in their manifestos, and follow up to that whoever eventually becomes the president at the end of the day will also be given accounts of his choice. We should uh, join us to the right to support the government and support our political leaders to see how they can succeed. Similarly, a delegation from the National Institute of Marketing of Nigeria came to also facilitate with the Director General of NTA on his appointment, and they pledged their solidarity. The essence and the point of professionalism you displayed, the leadership was very obvious to us, and we as a body um, are grateful uh, to God Almighty for making this happen. I would like to assure the council and of course our team and members across the country and those in diaspora that I will not let it down to make sure, just like you have uh, stated in your remark, that uh, you will assist in training and also retraining our staff, especially those in marketing. The delegation says the Director General has the capacity, exposure and discipline to take NTA to the next level in the broadcast ecosystem. Nkosi Technico, NT News. And still on the campaigns, Plateau State Governor and Director General Tenubu Shatima Presidential Campaign Council, Simon Lalong, says the earlier proposed peace walk and prayers for Wednesday, September 28, 2022, to officially kick off our campaigns for the 2023 presidential elections will no longer hold. This, he said, is to allow the expansion of the list of appointment of members of the Campaign Council to accommodate more stakeholders and interests within the APC family. So, the timetable has been adjusted in order to ensure everyone is on board before activities officially commence. Lalong noted that as the ruling and most attractive party in Nigeria, we understand the sacrifices and understanding of the party's teaming members who are more than willing to volunteer themselves for this great task ahead. It also shows the enormous love that the party members have for our candidates. A new date and timetable of events will be announced later. Meanwhile, this end campaign messages are what sell candidates of a political party to the electorate. As such, stakeholders at the unveiling of the APC online news platform in Abuja advocate decorum during pre-election activities. Salihu Gwanara reports. The much anticipated moment for active electioneering activities in Nigeria is here. In about five months, Nigerian electorates will be at the polls to make a decision to elect leaders of their choice. Within this period, the critical role of the media in information dissemination and the desire to complement efforts to boost information flow on the activities of the APC-led government is the reason stakeholders are here to witness the rebirth of the APC online news platform. The brightest moment for our party of our country is yet to come. I'm from Delta State. Niger Delta. I know what the government is still doing there. It is not only the Niger brain. Our platform is still to be astute about where there is need to balance our students. This country is not this time looking for a doer. We don't need a doer at the moment. But what this country needs is a visioner. The APC today has lived to its founding values. Today, Votes count, don't they? Today the judiciary works, doesn't it? Today the security institutions are neutral when it comes to elections, are they not? Collectively, stakeholders agreed that the event would not have come at a better time than now. In Abuja, Sali Guanara, NTA News. Let's uh, take a look at the economy now as Nigeria's Apex Bank, the Central Bank of Nigeria may witness a major restructuring as Senate is considering a bill that seeks to separate the office of the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria from that of chairman of the bank's board. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unquo tells us more. 
It was a busy other paper at Tuesday's plenary. The Central Bank of Nigeria Act Amendment Bill was considered. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria is also the chairman of the bank's board, but the bill, sponsored by Senator Sadiq Omar, is seeking to separate the two offices. A number of senators did not agree with the bill and called for its withdrawal, but the sponsor remained unyielding. To divest the board of the powers of determining and fixing the salaries and allowances of its members. And three, to consider and approve the annual budget of the bank, which lies solely with the National Assembly. Uh, that, that we shall really allow this uh, bill to go for public hearing. We'll get more information and then they will be properly convinced. But I've given them enough reason to believe that this bill should be allowed to go for second reading. You can check. Any governor of the central bank is both the chairman of the bank and the chief executive. From Federal Reserve Bank to Bank of China. I would recommend that uh, this thing be stepped down so that uh, we'll be given uh, uh, step down so we can have uh, uh, more materials, you know, uh, to be able to make an informed uh, uh, judgment. Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Federal Polytechnic Cabo Kano State Establishment yes. Bill, sponsored by Jibin Barrow, also passed second reading. And conduct research in restricted fields of learning and human endeavor. While that seeking to provide for rotation of power, sponsored by Senator Patrick Abamoro, suffered a setback and was withdrawn. The National Health Act No. 8 2014 Amendment Bill, which seeks, among other issues, to provide for private sector participation, Federal Investor of Medical Sciences EBA Kogi State Establishment Bill, and the Court of Appeal Act Amendment Bill, seeking to increase justices of the Appeal Court from 90 to 110, passed third reading. Senator Danladi Sankara drew the attention of the Senate to what he described as urgent need for humanitarian support to victims of flooding across Nigeria, especially Jigawa State. The Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2022 was among the bills passed for first reading from the National Assembly. Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Meanwhile, the Central Bank of Nigeria's Monetary Policy Committee has, for the third time in a row, hot rates in a bid to tame inflation that has risen above 20 percent. Leah Katung Babatunde reports that the committee also took a decision to raise credit reserve ratio to 32.5 percent as the campaign season begins. It was as visible as it could be for governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele. Lowering rates was not an option for the Monetary Policy Committee the global and domestic environment a cut up in difficult circumstances with the possibility of a global recession staring authorities in the face. So, a tight policy stands to consolidate on the last two hikes for staking. 150 basis points brings the monetary policy rate to 15.5%, while credit reserve ratio was also tightened with a 48 hours matching order for banks to comply. We are going to take liquidity out of their vaults by Thursday. If any bank fails to meet up with this expectation, the decision of the NPC is that we may need to preclude those banks from foreign exchange market for on Friday and onwards until they meet this 32.5. In easing the pressure on forex demand, the governor says commercial airlines should source through their banks as no law makes it compulsory for foreign airlines to buy dollars directly from the central bank. When you give Nigerian airlines opportunity to land in your country, they pay people who are traveling using their air, these airlines will pay Naira. If they pay Naira, they will not come to the central bank or any bank to say they want to remit ticket sales. I have to be selfish to defend my country, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing they will go to their banks, or by extension, go to the CBN to see the need, will be dollars to import plates, or dollars to import spares, or pay for the insurance, which is significantly lower than if they were to remit the entire ticket.
certificate sales. Despite a cloudy outlook, the bank says it is committed to protecting the economy without losing sight of the spending that comes with elections. Firstly, to put a leash on inflation and then spur growth, particularly in the non oil sector, as it has been doing through its various interventions in Abuja. Leah Katung Baba today, NTA News. And this is business, and we are still talking about the Apex Bank, where the Central Bank of Nigeria believes that the country's digital currency, the e-Naira, provides ease of transaction and therefore should be accepted by all. The reason why we organize the, the Hackathon project is for us to really discover our youths that are very versed in, in technology to support our e-Naira project or our digital currency. And it is um, expected that we would work with them to ensure that we tap the ideas so as to improve our payment system in Nigeria. And the Nigerian Export Promotion Council now has an anti-corruption unit to strengthen accountability, transparency and enhance service delivery in the council's operations. Comfort Amodi reports that the unit, inaugurated by the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Matters Commission, ICPC, is saddled with the responsibility of identifying areas that are prone to corruption in the council and prefer solutions. By the federal government and the anti-corruption agencies demand that all public institutions, public officers, and managers of public funds are in unison to diminish and eliminate the scourge of corruption. We are committed to being strategic partners with the ICPC in the fight against corruption. I will therefore call on the Commission to develop ways of engaging the NDPC Act to through continuous training and retraining. And taking a look at the markets, Nigeria's equities market on Tuesday failed to sustain previous day's gain as markets decreased by 0.06% and investors losing 15 billion naira at the close of trading. The All Share Index and market capitalization depreciated from preceding day's highs of 49,189.32 basis points and 26.5 trillion, respectively, to 49,161.45 basis points and 26.5 trillion naira. Transnational Corporation, Zenit Bank, and FCMB led in volume of stocks. That is business news, but network news continues with Adiola in Lagos. Adiola, take it from here. Thank you, Benny. The fight against smuggling activities has taken another dimension with the Nigeria Customs Service leveraging on the technical support from the Comptroller General at ensuring that acts of economic sabotage are totally nipped in the bud. The acting controller of the Federal Operations Unit Zone A, while reflecting on the seizure of more than 80,000 litres of petrol valued at 13.7 million naira at Baji, Badagri and the Borderland, the line loaded this support, which enabled the service mobilize 18 operational vehicles to stop the illegal export of the commodity to neighboring countries. Boladi Salami reports. Baji, Ayedu, and Badagri are not just communities along the river fringe, but remote outposts where smuggling thrive. It is a disadvantage to the people. But again, for smugglers who capitalized on this to perpetrate the illegal trade. In fact, illegal export of petroleum products is a major challenge along this axis. This scene paints a picture of desperate abandonment with some of the items still stockpiled in the means of conveyance. The acting controller of the Federal Operations Unit, Zone A, who was at the scene, was obviously baffled by the ingenuity of concealment which is a sharp contrast from the conventional method of being ferried in jerry cans. He said 60 drums of petrol were taken to the creek side, waiting to be moved out of the country until officers of the Federal Operations Unit Zone A engaged in exchange of firepower with the smugglers who abandoned the goods. To our country subsidized petroleum products for us to our own use. And then 
some recalcitrant people who believe that is the way they can always survive still believe it is to shortchange the nation as well. It's criminal. Although investigation is still ongoing, but customs said most of the petroleum products were gotten from filling stations along the axis. And that will tell us for government to be able to analyze and take statistics of how many filling stations that are supposed to get close to the borderline. The customs has been trailing consignment for a week, which is made possible by its partnership with the community. It is a trend signaling greater positivity. As the acting controller said, there is now a reduction in the number of attacks on customs officers from host communities. In Lagos, Abelade Salami, NTA News. And that's it from Lagos. We'll take another break, but do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nca.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen. To stay. Life presents hopes, dreams, and challenges. Challenges that can become successes with a little help. Because a little help can empower you to go from despair to celebration. A little help can keep you going until the race is won. A little help can turn bundles of anxiety into a bundle of joy. And with Glow Data, you get much more than just a little help. You get the biggest data deals in town to make every day glow with small wins and big wins. Dial star triple seven hash to select your Glow Data plan. Nothing should divide us. Nothing can divide us. And absolutely nothing will divide us. In our togetherness lies our strength, our diverse nature. Beautifies us. Yes, we may not agree socially, politically, and culturally, not even our ideological, religious, or ethnic differences. We need to blush. Let us draw a leaf from the painful reality of our recent history and give dialogue and negotiation a chance. Let us support our gallant men and women of the armed forces, symbol of our national unity. One people we are, have been, and always will be. Nigeria is my country. Your country, our country. Let us keep our together in peace. If you want to become something, become a child again. Why be a patient? If you must worry, don't worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? Shield your families from germs. When Dittol is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected. It's been a long day, and nothing could feel better than sleeping comfortably. So relax, you won't be bothered by leakage or irritation tonight. Huggies Dry Comfort has a super fast dry layer that quickly absorbs wetness for all night dryness and comfort. So baby can wake up comfy and dry as the night before. And you keep doing great, mom. Now in a new look pack, available from 650 Naira. And then I'm talking up to you. Thank you. Hi there. Hello. You can price Sha, but you're always saving on everything. Except for here. This is where you're throwing money down the drain. Hi. On this cleaning product, impossible. You need the new Hapik toilet cleaner. With just one thirty naira satchel of Hapik toilet cleaner, you save more. Hapik stick formula stays longer, so it cleans ten times better. Wow, hey! And it saves because it's only thirty naira, giving you a sparkling clean toilet and great savings too.
Introducing the Nigerian Marketing Awards. Celebrating marketing excellence in Nigeria on Friday, 11 November 2022 at the Ecole Convention Center. Visit our website at www.nma-ng.com for more information. Entry closes September 30, 2022. Welcome back. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says the World Tourism Day is a platform for advocacy and mass mobilization for political will and resources to address global problems. He said that this in Calabar, the Cross River State capital, at this year's World Tourism Day. Anthony Forsen reports. The theme for this year's celebration is Rethinking Tourism. It is aimed at inspiring discussions around the sector. With the global event holding in Bali, Indonesia, by the United Nations World Tourism Organization, reflections and recovery from the impact of COVID-19 is equally on the focus. The World Tourism Day represents a unique opportunity for member states to shine the spotlight on culture, political, Social and economic value of tourism. The day, created by the United Nations, also aims to spread worldwide awareness regarding the contributions the tourism sector can make in achieving the sustainable development goals. Deputy Governor Cross Rusted stood in for the state governor. Tourism is a major event for any country, like a city, you know. You see, even the, even, uh, the COVID 19, what we talked about was that, you know, you will not make tourism differently, you know, if you see the common job loss we have from the mentality of the loan. Over the last two decades, the tourism industry has become one of the most important organs for economic and sustainable growth in many countries. In Calabar, the cross rusted capital, Antony Forson, NTA News. Time for a quick break. Let's stay. Aside from the rescue of five a Kona Fest 2022, Nigeria's biggest cultural festival, the festival that unites the nation. Date 7th to 13th November 2022 at the National Stadium and the Teslim Balogun Stadium, Lagos. For sponsorship and support, please call Ade 0813 415 4562 Aking 0803 067 Carlo 0803 Nafest using culture to unite the nation. Chairman National Festival Planning Committee announcer. You're always running around. Keeping up with you needs a comforting touch from Huggies with the right stretch for how much you move. Huggies pants comfortably fit baby's tummy. Their 360 degree comfort fit waistband makes them easy to open and pull off and on. So baby can keep on exploring and you keep doing great mom. Now in a new look pack. If you want to become something, become a child again. Why be a patient? 
If you must worry, don't worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? Shield your families from germs. When Dettol is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected. And then I'm talking to you. Thank you. Hi there. You can price shop, but you're always saving on everything except for here. This is where you're throwing money down the drain. Hi. On this cleaning product, impossible. You need the new Hapic Toilet Cleaner. With just one thirty naira sachet of Hapic Toilet Cleaner, you save more. Hapic Stick Formula stays longer, so it cleans ten times better. Wow, hey! And it saves because it's only thirty naira, giving you a sparkling clean toilet and great savings too. Forget last season. Forget the winners and the losers. Forget every moment that stole the show. Because this is a brand new season on Gold TV. And it's going to be bigger and better than any season before it. With over seven leagues and top competitions, plus a World Cup. Make sure you get the best seats in the house this new football season. Get a decoder, Go Tenna, plus one month Go TV Max for 6,900 Naira only. Bigger season, greater football. Go TV. Love it. Crime fighting mechanisms of the Nigeria Police, Akwa Ibom State Command, in conjunction with troops of two brigade of the Nigerian Army, are yielding positive results. The latest is a release of five kidnapped victims after a raid and rescue operation on the hideouts of a kidnapped syndicate at Abia Palm in Etimeko local government area of Akwa Ibom State, where two notorious kidnappers were neutralized. Wisdom Jacob reports. Aside from the rescue of five victims, cars were also recovered as well as ammunition. One of us escaped this early morning and reported to the police, which the police came and rescued. Two operators professionally trailed the hoodlums who are notorious for terrorizing residents of Uyo and Environ to their hideout where a gun battle ensued. Three of the gang members were fatally injured and gave up the ghost while they on their way to the hospital. In Uyo, Wisdom Jacob, NTA News. The presidency asserts that there is no state in the Federation, not even Katsina, has been authorized to procure automatic weapons for their security outfits. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Krapa Shehu, indicates that President Buhari has repeatedly made it clear that nobody is allowed to illegally carry AK-47 or any other automatic weapon, but must surrender them where they fail to do so. The law enforcement agencies have been given clear directives to deal with any such outlaws. Under the existing regulations, only the Office of the National Security Advisor can issue such authorization upon proper clearance by the President and Commander-in-Chief. At the moment, no such approvals have been issued to any state government. And that concludes NTA Network News tonight. Many thanks for watching. And please be reminded that the fight against rape and rapist is still on. Be a star and join the fight. I'm Yen Ray John. Have a good night.